Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I am celebrating Valentine's Day by making a vintage mailbox. Don't forget, I whip up fresh cakes for you every week, so make sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the notification bell. <laughs> Let's start the show! To make this vintage mailbox cake, I baked two rectangular chocolate cakes, leveled them and layered them to give me eight layers of chocolate cake. Do you have enough footage of me banging balloons with my headband? Bang I what? just want to make sure. <laughs> Time to simple syrup all eight chocolate cake layers. You know what every Valentine's cake needs, right? A secret love chamber. <laughs> I made myself a template of the perfect rectangle that would fit within my cake layers and cut a secret love chamber out of five of my layers using a small serrated knife. For exact instructions on how I layered and cut my cakes, head to howtocakeit.com, which is also your Valentine baking headquarters. There are plenty of yummy things to bake there. Time to dye my Italian meringue buttercream a lovely shade of pink. It's appropriate. I think I just invented a new music. Heart new balloon method. drumming. I'm going to start to build up this mailbox cake. As I fill the layers with buttercream, I also begin to fill my secret chamber with candy heart-shaped candy. I know you don't want to talk about this, yo, but we've got to address it. There was a Valentine catastrophe. <laughs> it was a heartbreak. My heart was broken. <laughs> it's the cake that broke my heart. I'm just gonna say it, I feel like I got a little bit cocky. I tried to fit 2.5 million candy hearts in the cake to represent all of my subscribers, and the cake almost busted open. Honest to goodness. I basically had to stop filling the cake and get Jeremy to help me, and what we did was duct tape cake boards all around the cake, like a girdle. <laughs> We built a cake girdle. So once I got the cake spanks on my mailbox cake, I put her in the fridge just to cool down and chill out. I need the buttercream to firm up and I need to relax, quite frankly. Once my cake had chilled out, I removed it from the fridge and decided to flip it as if this experience wasn't trying enough. I was like, why not? Why not flip this cake over? That'll be fun. So what I did was I added the final two layers of cake on top and with the cake girdle still on, had Jeremy help me flip the cake over. The footage of this is not gonna be good. We'll, we'll show you what we have, but a lot of it is the back of Jeremy's head. So yeah, it's time for me to remove the cake girdle, the cake spanks. They actually have to be removed with an X-Acto knife. <laughs> Finally, something I know. I'm gonna crumb coat and chill this cake I crumb coated in my pink buttercream because it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> this is more of like, um, this is a rhythmic tribal Valentine's dance, okay? It's time to carve the rounded top of this mailbox. I used a cake pan and held it up to the front and back of the mailbox just as a guide to help me mark off the curve that I wanna cut. Then I used a long serrated knife and from all four corners cut off that curve on the front and back of the mailbox. Yeah, it's a mailbox now. Okay. I can't wait to cut this open and see the secret chamber. Once my crumb coat is chilled, I ice the cake one more time and place it back in the fridge to chill. I find it really helpful when icing a square cake like this. In order to achieve sharp edges on a cake, I find it necessary to chill and touch up as needed, as many times as necessary. You may know that we already do something called Fan Love Friday on our Instagram, but we're gonna take it a little further and give a shout out to some of you guys in every single episode this month. 
Fat and Love Feb. Today, I'm giving love to some of the original How to Cake It super fans. So a big shout out to Simone and Giovanna, Vidya, and Avery. Yay! <laughs> I'm so glad one didn't land in my coffee. If you want to get a shout out in my next YouTube video, here's how. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and head over to your favorite How to Cake It video to leave a comment telling me why. You must use the hashtag FanLoveFeb to be entered. I'm going to read through all the comments and give a shout out to some of you in next Tuesday's video. I'm going to cover this cake in fondant. Surprise! <laughs> this video is full of lovely surprises. I'm actually gonna cover it in stages. I want the mailbox to appear open, so to begin, I'm gonna cover the front part of the mailbox with black fondant. Symbolic of the emptiness. No, I'm, just, I'm just gonna take this interview down a road that we don't wanna go on. Um, <laughs> I smooth it onto my cake and then I use a sharp paring knife to cut away the excess. <laughs> Just let me finish. <sighs> this gives the mailbox the appearance that it's empty. Next, it's time to cover the main body of the mailbox. I roll out a big sheet of white fondant and then I drape it over the mailbox from side to side and over the curved top. I smooth the white fondant on and again, trim away the excess. I want a really nice clean trim at the front and back of the mailbox. To cover the back panel of my mailbox, I rolled out some of my hot pink fondant and covered it the same way I covered the front in black, trimming it to fit. I used my clay extruder to create some bands of fondant that were perfect for covering my seams. I created a white semicircle band of fondant for the front of my mailbox and a hot pink one for the back. By covering up seams in your fondant, it really helps make your cakes look just a little bit more realistic. If you'd like to learn more about my favorite fondant tools as well as the clay extruder, there is a link below. To make the lid of my mailbox, I have to make sure I get the size right. So I create a template by measuring the front of my mailbox and I laid that paper onto some red fondant that I rolled out and cut out the shape of the lid. To create the hinge, I once again used my clay extruder. I placed some red fondant through it and this way I created a nice red tube and then I just used my knife to create indents at equal distances from each other to make it look like a piano hinge for a mailbox hinge rather. Then I placed that on and then laid my red lid in front. I'd like to make a pattern of pretty hearts on my vintage mailbox. So for this I rolled out four colors of fondant, a light pink, a hot pink, a red, and a purple. And then I used a set of heart cutters in four different sizes to cut out some hearts for my pattern. And I even cut out the outside so they were a nice little outline of a heart. To attach these to my mailbox, I just brushed on a little bit of water to the back and stuck them on. And I created the pattern of hearts going in every direction, upside down, sideways, all over the place. Just random. Did you actually do it randomly? I did it randomly. My rulers were screaming. You can't hear it in the video. Now, to create the lip of the lid, I used a little bit of CMC to stiffen it up a bit, and then I rolled myself a long band, cut it into a half inch width, and glued that around the lid of my mailbox so that it stood up. This mailbox needs a flag. So when the flag is up, you have mail, and when it's down, You've got nothing. A lot of people don't have mailboxes. I have to tell them. It's true. <laughs> so I made my flag out of some gum paste that I dyed the same purple as the hearts on my cake. Of course, I made myself a little flag template, cut out a flag, and let it dry for a couple of days before I attached it to my cake. And then using a couple of piping tips, I just created a little grommet that looked like it fastened the flag to the mailbox.
Okay, um, is that the end of this one? <gasps> no, I did some gum paste. I did some fancy things, Jocelyn. You didn't even see it. There's a love letter to you in this video. <laughs> and Orhan, and Connie, and Amy, and Mr. Cake. Oh yeah, and Walter. <laughs> So I used an actual envelope as the template to cut out rectangles for my very thin gum paste. And then I traced the like the triangles of the envelope, you know, on the back. Once they were dry, I used some food markers to write return addresses on the back and then I did something I've never done before and I combined two loves. I have a thing for wax seals. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean seals made out of wax. So what I did is I used my wax seal on fondant. I expect applause. That is like amazing. Thank you. If you don't have a wax seal collection, which is ludicrous, um, I used a couple of buttons. I used a stamp, a very clean new stamp, anything that can emboss into fondant and pressed it in to make my wax seal. Subscribe to this channel, ring the notification bell, and don't forget to leave a comment on your favorite How to Cake It video with the hashtag FanLoveFeb so I can give you a shout out in next week's video. Yay!